Hi, I'm Jeremy Simon from 3D Universe, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make the BE mask. Now, this is a mask that has been detailed in our other video, so check that video out if you want to learn more about the mask design and the team that created it. This video is going to be specifically for those that have a 3D printer and want to make this mask, either for yourself and your family or for donation to help us get these masks into the hands of those that need them. So there are uh, some, some unique aspects to making sure that you get the right kind of result, the right kind of quality, and so we're going to take you through that in this video here. Now the first thing to understand is that this mask itself is designed to be printed in TPU, which is a flexible material. TPU is a lot more challenging to print than other materials like PLA or PETG, things that you might be more familiar with. Uh, it is, because it's a flexible material, uh, it has a tendency to uh, get jammed more easily. Sometimes it gets bunched up in the Bowden tube if you have a printer that you know feeds the material from the back. Uh, so there are some challenges. Uh, the most important thing when printing TPU in most cases is keeping the speed slow. You're going to want to print this material much more slowly than you would something like PLA. So if you're used to printing at, uh, I don't know, 70 or 80 millimeters per second, for TPU you're going to want to go more towards 25, 30 millimeters per second in most cases. The specifics are going to vary quite a bit based upon the specific printer that you're using, as well as the specific brand of TPU that you're using. But we do have some recommended settings to get you started on our website at bemask.org. So if you go to that website, you'll find some suggested printer settings that you can use to start with and then sort of experiment and tweak from there to find the optimal settings for your particular setup. So the most important thing is to get those settings optimized so that you're getting a really good overall print quality. And this is what the mask should look like when you're getting good quality print. Uh, you shouldn't have any kind of visible gaps uh, or significant imperfections. There might be some minor imperfections in the surface, uh, some, some little you know, pock marks or indentations are okay, but anything more significant that looks like it might allow you know, air to get through would be a significant problem. So you want to make sure that overall you've got really nice layer stacking, good clean layers, and that the uh, surface finish is pretty smooth overall. Now you will notice that when it gets near the top of the print, especially on these upper edges, you do tend to get more of uh, stringing and some artifacts from the TPU. So there's going to be some little bits and globs that you can see around the upper edge. That's not a problem, but it is very important that we clean those up because that's going to make for a much more comfortable mask if, if those things are cleaned up. You'd be surprised how these tiny little bumps and imperfections can really become uncomfortable and start to sort of, uh, you know, become abrasive as you're wearing the mask, especially for longer periods of time. So we're going to want to clean that up and make a nice smooth inner surface, especially at all these places where it's going to actually be touching the face. So as I said, the mask body itself uh, needs to be printed in TPU. The filter frame that gets inserted over the filter to hold the filter sheets in place, that gets printed in a rigid material. So you can use PLA or tough PLA or PETG or pretty much any rigid material that you like. That just needs to be something rigid so that it can hold that filter tightly in place. Now this design has been optimized for TPU, uh, which means that we're taking advantage of the fact that this material has some flex, it has some give to it, so that when you insert that filter frame over the filter sheets, you're going to get a really nice tight fit. It's actually going to cause the inner uh, surfaces of this, this mask to expand a little bit to hold those filter sheets really tightly. So if you tried to print this mask in PLA, you won't even be able to insert the filter frame because it's just too tight a fit. So those tolerances were really designed specifically for the mask being printed in TPU. Now we've done a lot of experimenting to try to identify the best print settings to balance speed and quality. We want to be able to print as many of these as possible, but we also want to make sure that the quality is good. We tried experimenting with larger size nozzles, but TPU is, again, a very challenging material to print, and those challenges are magnified when you go to larger nozzles, like a, a 0.8 or even a 0.6. So we ended up falling back to a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, you're free to try the larger ones. Maybe with your particular printer setup, you'll have better luck, but we found that the best quality comes from using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Now you can use thicker layers, uh, as a general rule of thumb, you can print up to about 75% of your nozzle diameter for a maximum layer thickness. So with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you could go as thick as about 0.32 millimeters for your layer thickness. 
you will see the layering, but visually we're not as concerned uh, about being able to see the layers. It's more about having a smooth surface, and I'll show you how we're going to clean that up in just a moment so that even with the thicker layers, you'll end up with a nice smooth inner surface at the points where it makes contact with the face. So once you have your settings optimized and you get a nice clean print, uh, take a, a, a moment to really carefully inspect both the outer surfaces as well as the inner surfaces. Make sure that you don't have any significant defects. You might notice some stringing, especially around the strap connectors. That's not a big deal. That's pretty easy to clean up. You might want to start with just a, a razor blade to sort of trim some of those little bits and pieces away. Um, that's certainly much better than trying to grab those pieces and pull on them because when you do that they'll, they'll tend to uh, sort of pull off strands of TPU material that can leave these grooves in the mask so it's better to try to sort of cut them away. Uh, you can also to some extent use uh, a heat gun or other tools like you know there's something called the Modify 3D Pro which is a, a 3D print modification tool which is basically like a little soldering iron that has different types of tips that you can use for cleaning up your prints. So you could use something like that to, to clean up some of those uh, little bits um, of stringing. For these areas on the inside of the mask where you get these sort of rough edges, these little bumps or other types of uh, minor defects on the upper inside edge, what we found is the, the best option for that is to use a, a high speed rotary tool with one of these nylon brush attachments. So something like this, where not a steel brush, but a nylon brush, so it's kind of a softer brush. And when you use that at a fairly high speed, it uh, creates enough friction that it'll, it'll smooth out all of those imperfections in the TPU and uh, give you a, a really nice smooth surface without actually you know, tearing into the material too much and, and causing you know, additional defects. So we're basically going to use this at a high speed, running it around the inside of the mask. Uh, you do want to pay attention to the direction that this is spinning. So since this tool is going in this direction, you don't want to hold it this way because it's since it's spinning in this direction, it's going to tend to grab on to the upper corner of the mask and sort of pull the tool outwards. You want to do it the other way so that it's sort of pulling downwards into the, into the mask. You'll get a better result that way. So you'll want to kind of go around in this direction with the tool going at high speed and smooth out all of these sort of little imperfections, bumps, strings, anything else like that where you have a rough edge to the top. Don't just rely on your eyes for this. Your, your fingers are going to give you a much better sense of what's going on. So constantly rub your, your finger along that inside edge and you'll feel the roughness of those spots that, that need to still get some, some finishing. And just keep working on it with the uh, high speed rotary tool and the nylon brush until you can run your finger all the way around the edge and it's a perfectly smooth surface uh, or as much so as possible. And that way when you put the mask on, it's gonna be a much more comfortable fit. Um, now, as a side note, you notice I'm not wearing gloves now, and that's because what I've found is that as opposed to trying to keep the whole environment perfectly sanitized, I find that it's easier to do my work on the mask and then go and sanitize the mask before uh, giving this out to anyone. So once this is all finished, I'm going to uh, wash this thoroughly with warm soapy water to make sure that the mask is, is completely cleaned. And from that point forward, I will wear uh, uh, gloves as I'm handling the mask, as I'm handling the filter material, putting things together and, uh, you know, sealed bags and that sort of thing. Um, you might also consider setting this aside once it's all packaged up and bagged. You might set the whole thing aside for, you know, a period of, of uh, several days at least um, to make sure that if there is any, any you know, remnant of, of the coronavirus in there, it would not, you know, survive um, most likely beyond that three to five day period as far as I'm aware. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, show you how this works when you use the high-speed rotary tool to clean one of these up. Now, I do recommend that you wear a mask yourself when you're doing this because uh, using a, a tool like this uh, is going to create some very fine particles of plastic, almost like a dust that gets into the air, and you don't want to be breathing that in. So wear a mask yourself while you're doing this part of the process.
Okay, so there we go. As you can see, it only takes a few minutes. And uh, you may have noticed I wasn't only going over those places that specifically had noticeable defects. I was going around the entire inner surface because even if there isn't any sort of a visible defect, even just the layering of the 3D printing can create a little bit of roughness. And so by smoothing the whole inner surface everywhere that it's going to have contact with the face, you get a much softer, smoother inner surface and that'll make it a lot more comfortable to wear. So once it's done, you should have something like this, nice clean inner edges, no signs of any defects. You can run your finger all the way around that inner edge and shouldn't feel anything that's in any way uh, rough or uh, bumpy or anything like that. It should be smooth all the way around, including as much as possible the upper surface, which also has some you know, layering from the 3D printing. So you wanna smooth that out as much as possible as well. And uh, at that point, you are ready to go ahead and sanitize the mask, wash it very thoroughly in warm soapy water, and then uh, you can package it up with the filter insert and the two and a half inch square sheets of uh, filter material, which is all detailed on our website, bemask.org, as well as in the other video that we've put together about this mask design. So I hope that was helpful. Stay safe. Thanks for watching.